that really bites. Hello everybody, this is Nathan Nelson with Stillwater Outdoors. Before we get started on this video, I wanted to make a quick announcement. I have some shirts. Yeah, buddy. So if you would like to get some of my apparel, just click on the link in the description and that'll take you right to the website. This past hunting season, I faced some really unfortunate circumstances. I was hunting a really big buck and this deer ended up getting poached. So I wanted to take you guys along for a little bit of the story of this hunt for this deer. During the summer, I was bouncing trail cameras all over the place, trying to locate some good mature deer. And I ended up finding this buck very late in the summer. It was the end of August once I found him. Now, a couple things that I observed about this deer right away is that he was very mature. He had tremendous mass. He was gnarly. He had junk everywhere. But there was a very unique characteristic about this buck. He had like this giant looking goiter underneath his neck. I don't even know if that's the right term, but it looked like a tumor. So I ended up giving this buck the name Tumor. Now once we got into the month of September, I got a few pictures of him right before season and then all of a sudden he disappeared. So I started putting in the work, bouncing cameras all over the place to try to find where this deer was spending his fall. Now this was kind of a challenge for me because I had no history with this deer. I had literally just found him at the end of August. So everything that I was doing was trying to figure him out right in that moment. After bouncing cameras around for a full month, just trying to locate where this deer was at, I ended up getting him on camera. This deer put on quite a show for the camera, gave me a very good look at what he had for headgear. And he's impressive. One of the most exciting parts about this was that I got this deer on camera in daylight, right at dusk, and he was coming right from a slashing that was not very far away. So I was figuring, he's gotta be bedding there. And so I went in for a hunt right on the edge of that slashing. So today I'm set up over a slashing and just the other day, yesterday, I was checking trail cameras and I finally, finally got the intel that I wanted. There's a monster buck that I call Tumor and he's bedding somewhere probably out in this slashing. When I got those pictures of him just recently, huge relief you know first of all that he's alive and second that he's moving in daylight real close to where i had a camera so i'm i'm excited for this hunt but it's a beautiful night to be out in the woods um, i just love this fingers crossed let's see what happens that night i didn't see anything very slow hunt so i was really trying to figure out this deer's patterns so I started bouncing even more cameras in and around this area, tightening down the, the range, the zone that I was putting these cameras in. And I could not seem to get him on camera after that moment. So it's like, geez, this deer just has no consistency. He's, he's all over the place. I could not figure out for the life of me where he was actually spending most of his time. I knew I must not have been close enough to his bedroom at this point. So I just kept working, kept trying for those next couple weeks. And finally, I got a picture of him and he was about a quarter mile away. And I thought, now I'm starting to hone in on where he's at. And then all of a sudden, I get two days in a row of pictures of this buck. So now I'm starting to get excited. We're getting into the range where I know that he's gonna be more consistent. I think I'm starting to figure out where he is betting at. I am set up in a spot here right now that I had scouted out this last spring. And there's a back straight this direction here. There's a slashing and a lot of oaks and stuff that are growing up in it. And right out in front of me here, there's this like draw that comes down and that leads right up into the slashing. And when I scouted the edge of the slashing, I found that a lot of rubs were coming in and out right on that draw. So I I thought, man, I mean, this has got to be a, a pretty high odds area for buck activity. I've got my big shooter buck tumor on camera there. And I wouldn't, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he 
he's bedded out in that slashing. Um, so that's a very real possibility. Now during this hunt, I did have a buck grunting on the ridge right next to me, probably about 150 yards away, but it was too thick, I couldn't see. But man, it got my heart racing. And I thought, man, there may, might have been a chance that that could have been Tumor or one of the other decent bucks that was in the area. So a couple days after that hunt, me and my wife, we celebrated the birth of our baby girl, Madeline. And this was such a special moment for us. Uh, just so exciting to bring our baby girl into this world. So I didn't get out in the woods and hunt at all during that time. I did a little bit later in the rut, pull an all day sit, didn't see anything. But when I would check my trail cameras and I even had a cell camera running in this area, during the entire rut, I never got a cruising picture of this buck. Never had any sort of intel that this deer was still running around in this area. So I thought, man, I must just not be in his zone or something happened to him. And I eventually just had to write this deer off the list and say, he's not killable, can't get him. So I started moving on to go try and find a different deer. And all of a sudden, late November, I get this picture from a buddy of mine. He saw it on Facebook, screenshotted it. It was Tumor, and he was dead. But then there started to become some rumors coming about with this deer. A little bit of some talk that it was not harvested legally. And I guess at this point there was starting to be a case that was forming uh, against these guys in this situation. And I was, submitted my trail camera pictures to be used as evidence by the DNR. And they started really digging into this. And as the details of this case unfolded in court, these individuals were found guilty. What ended up happening was that these guys were driving and uh, it was 11 o'clock at night on the 27th of October. And they spotted this deer with a light and they put a crossbow out the window and shot that thing with a bolt. So these guys ended up taking a plea deal in court Originally, they were supposed to be fined $24,000 uh, because there was seven different deer that were confiscated and uh, there was 57 tickets and a bunch of misdemeanors as well. So this was much bigger than just the story of my deer. This was a very big poaching ring. Now, one thing that I wanted to make clear is that I have no ill will towards these guys. We're all human, we all make mistakes, we all do things that are regrettable. We all need God's grace in our life. So I hope that you hear my heart in this, that I'm, I'm not trying to bash anybody through this video. My goal in this is simply to raise awareness of the fact that it is so important to be a good sportsman. No deer is worth tarnishing your name. Your name is so important to you. So doing everything that you can to hunt ethically and to harvest ethically, that's what needs to be done to protect you. And second of all, you might be taking away opportunities from others. In a situation like what I was in, I put months of work into this deer. My better part of the season was spent entirely focused on this deer. If another hunter took that deer legally and ethically, phew, congrats to them. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. I'd be so happy for them, so proud of them to be able to do that. Because anytime somebody gets a big deer in the big woods like this, that is a remarkable thing. But in this situation, it takes opportunities away from people that are spending their vacation to do this. It takes opportunities away from people that are working hard and even spending time away from family or uh, just the resources that they, they put into this. And so I think it's really important that we as hunters represent the hunting community well. That we think twice before we act. The silver lining in all of this was that I was able to go in and put my hands on this deer's antlers. It's pretty special 
to actually be able to hold the antlers of a deer that you've only seen trail camera pictures of, a deer that you've dreamt of. It, it, it's, it's a, it was a bittersweet moment. You know, he had 150 and 6 eighth inches of antler on him, 15 scorable points. So it was bitter in the sense that I lost that opportunity at that deer. But it was sweet in the fact that there was closure to the story. And it was sweet in the fact that there was justice in this story. You know, often there's a lot of hunters out there that unfortunate circumstances like this come about and they don't get that justice. And that leaves a little bit of a hole for each hunter in that situation. If you're wondering, I did ask the officer if I could have the antlers to be able to display on my own wall. Uh, but they decided that uh, this deer could be used for a purpose there as a uh, visual reminder to people to be good sportsmen. And so they're gonna be getting that thing mounted and put up in, in the headquarters building. I really wish that I could have given you guys a better ending to this story, but that's what happened. That was my season. But despite all of that, I still enjoyed the hunt. Pretty cool antlers, man. It's a beast. Thank you.